The 2020-21 season countdown is brought to you by Odds Checker, your one-stop betting hub. Hi, and welcome along to our AFTV Transfer Daily Special, brought to you today by Odds Checker, your one-stop betting hub for all the odds. We have a very, very special guest with us today, and I know he's been busy today. It's been a busy day for him. We've got the man himself, Fabrizio Romano. How are you doing, Fabrizio? Hello, hello, hello. A pleasure to be with you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm okay. Crazy day for Messi, but I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's just quickly touch on that. I mean, I know you've been very busy with this news about Messi, that Messi's staying at Barcelona. Um, yes, it's, it's crazy, but yes. <laughs> I think there's a, there's, there's a lot of fans in the Premier League um, kind of happy about that because we're thinking he's going to Manchester <laughs> City. We're in big trouble. <laughs> I know, I know, it's normal, but there were huge possibilities to see Leo Messi to Manchester City. If Barcelona would have said, okay, let's start a negotiation, let's start to, to speak about the situation of Leo, for sure Manchester City were going for him. They were ready, they were feeling ready to make a bid, to make an important contract to Leo Messi. And then Barcelona always said, or you pay 700 million euro, or the player will not move. And they won. We have to say if they won because Leo Messi is absolutely unhappy right now. And he said it. So it's public. It's not my opinion. But we have to wait to understand what will happen on next summer, I guess. Because Leo yeah. will leave for free. He probably will leave for free. And we will see a big war to sign him. Maybe you come to Arsenal. I hope for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Fabrizio, it's great to have you on. When it comes to transfers, you are the man now. 1.6 million followers on Twitter. You know, I, mean, I was reading some comments when we announced that we were going to have you and people were saying, listen, this is the only guy I trust <laughs> when it comes to transfers. I listen to no one else. When Fabrizio says his famous catchphrase, which is, here we go, I know that the player is coming. I mean, can you believe how big is you, you've become with these transfer rumours? Yes, and I have to say thank you to you as, uh, as FTV, but also as to the fans of Arsenal fans, of all over football fans, because really I, I feel proud. I feel so proud because uh, it's a big responsibility, but I wake up every morning. I sleep so, so low, so, so low hours, like five hours, six hours. But my feeling when I can broke news, I can have news and I can give updates about the transfers is that people are happy to, to receive news, to, to know that I try to do my best. I never try to sell dreams and then players are not, are not coming. I want to say the truth of what I'm told. And that's my, my target. And I'm happy and thank you for, for saying this because it's thanks to the fans. I am, I'm working for the fans, not just for myself. And I, I don't like the mentality of, okay, I, I am the king, I am the goat. No, it's not my mentality. I prefer to give news, and that's why people are happy. Not because of me, but because of the news. <laughs> <laughs> You're the goat, man. You're the goat. And Thank you. <laughs> you know what, right? Um, as I said, it's, it's it's amazing how many people like look for you now to, to hear your rumors. Where where do you get the bulk of your information from? Is it from agents? Is it from you know the clubs themselves? Because it, it you know it, it can be very difficult to get information around transfers because obviously. A lot of times they want to conduct them in a, as much secrecy as possible. Yes, it, it's so difficult. Yes. Um, I, I have to say that it depends. It depends by the clubs. It depends by the transfers because, you know, in the transfer market in last years, it's not like five or six years ago, then you can just get news from the clubs because the, the, the transfer news were clubs by club. So they were speaking about transfer club by club directly. Uh, now you have the agents. Now you have the intermediary. Now you have many people involved. And the agents also mean that you can have an important agency who has like four or five agents working together that can help you to get news. So we have many people involved in the, the transfer market and this is a big help for me, for example, to work not just on Italian football transfers, but also in UK, in Spain sometimes, in, 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 in German football too. So I try to do my best all over the world. It's not impossible to cover all the transfers, but I try also, thanks, because as I told you, it's not just about the clubs. Sometimes the club can give you news, the directors of the clubs, yes. They can confirm also the news. I always try to check with the clubs to not create problems and to be sure of what I'm saying. But 
also many times I have good sources like agents that always help me. And my secret is that I try to have a good relationship with the people. I don't call them just for the news. I also call them when the window is off and I try to, to, to know how they are and that is the situation also for their family. If they came here in Italy, we can meet. So I try to have a good relationship because I feel football transfer like my family. I have to have a good relationship with all the people, directors, agents. And if you give respect, you have respect back. So that's my mentality. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. And um, do you if you ever had because I've had this before, <laughs> where you've got information from an agent, and then it's turned out to be wrong. It's turned out like they've changed their mind and done something else. Yes, yes, it happens. It happens, but I think it depends also by the, the person. It's normal. You can't control everyone always. But I always try to check. I never trust just one person. I always try to check with other agents involved. But for example, the last time it happened to me was about the hour steal for Chelsea. I remember it was a complicated situation when I said, here we go for hours because no one was saying, okay, it's done. Okay, there were talks, advanced talks, okay, but to say it's done. And before saying, I was not just speaking with the people directly involved with the deal, but I also knew that they were ready to sign other players. And it happens in transfer market also for other clubs. It's just an example with the Chelsea and, and others. But it happens so often that you have the club who are ready to spend their money with the player they are going to sell on another player. And they were involved with Roma here in Italy to sign Patrick Schick to Bayer Leverkusen with money of others. So I was also always talking also with Roma to understand what Bayer Leverkusen were saying to them about the money to spend from others to Roma. So, you know, I can try to check not just with the single club or the single agent. I always try to check with many sources to be sure of what I'm going to say. Well, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. And you know what? I've got some questions to ask you because I've got many as you will know, when it comes to Arsenal, we get linked to practically everybody going out there. Let's start off with one player. This our player. He hasn't signed a new deal yet. I was uh, down by the ground earlier on today. Uh, a guy came up to me. He said, oh, Robbie, I'm getting worried now. Why is Aubameyang not signed yet? Is he going to sign? I say yes. Confident? Yes. I am confident. I am confident, and also Arsenal are confident, and also Arteta is absolutely confident, and the agent of Young is absolutely confident. So I think yes. I think yes, also because um, when the, some other clubs contacted him, uh, he in, in April, for example, and in May, he was considering to listen to other bids to, to, to consider to, to leave the club. Now the situation is completely different. He's in talks to extend his contract. I'm convinced he will sign soon but really soon. So also because his agents, as I told you, in April and May, they were speaking, for example, with Barcelona. They were speaking also with Inter here in, in Italy. If Inter would have sold Lautaro Martinez to Barcelona, they were going to try for Obama Young uh, from, from Arsenal. But now the situation is completely different, apart that Inter will keep Lautaro, so we don't have this kind of move. But also because Obama Young decided to stay. He understood that Arsenal has a good project, I think. They are planning to do a good team. and They have a fantastic manager, in my opinion, and also in his opinion, because when you speak with people from football, agents, directors, players, they always speak so well about, about Arteta. He, he's perfect for Arsenal idea, and that's why he's ready to stay. So I think Arsenal has been good to, to convince him, and I think he will sign soon also because of Arteta. All right, brilliant. I've got another one for you, especially seeing as you're over in Italy. I'm sure you might have heard this one. Now, this is Lucas Torreira. Um, we signed, you know, just a couple of seasons ago. Um, this first season, he was a bit homesick for Italy. Then he started, started settling in. They, we, really, we really like him here at Arsenal, but it seems to be not quite working out for him. And uh, we're seeing a lot of um, links with clubs over there in Italy. The latest one being Fiorentina, um, said to be interested in bringing him over in a structured deal over to Italy. Yes, it's true. Uh, Lucas Herrera wants to come back to Italy. This is 100%. He wants to come back. And I'm a bit sad, I have to say, because I'm convinced that he's a fantastic player. I love him. Mm. He, when he was playing here in Italy in Sampdoria, Everyone here in Italy and me too were saying, wow, he is a top, top player because he was seeming like the typical Italian regista. He is from South America, but he is a true player. In, for me, he's ready to play in top clubs. So I was so happy for him to join Arsenal. And then I think he had some problem also outside the pitch. It's not about just football. He wants to live in Italy. He is South American. And sometimes can happen that South American players wants to stay in different countries than England. So I think that's what, what happened to Torreira because he's perfect to play wherever, in my opinion. And yes, Fiorentina are trying to get him. 
this is absolutely true. They are, they are in talks with Arsenal for a two years loan with a buy option for, for Torreira. Also, Torino are trying. It's so difficult because, for example, Torino last year never signed player of the level of Lucas Torreira. So I don't see this as easy deal, but they are trying. This is true because mm. the manager of Torino, who is Marco Giampaolo, was the same manager at Sampdoria with Torreira. And that's why Torreira is considering to move also to Torino. So it's Torino against Fiorentina in this moment. I heard something about links, rumors about Roma with a possible swap deal with Diavara, but I'm told it was absolutely fake. They never had anything about this. And Arsenal are not considering Torreira, uh, no, the Diavara, sorry. So they are considering just to sell Torreira to another Italian team, Torino or Fiorentina in this moment. Okay, and then there's another player um, being linked with a move to Italy, and that's Socrates. Um, Socrates, of course, um, one year left on his deal over here, looking to, I think, also looking to move him on. Obviously, we've got Gabriel now, Saliba. You know, there's a lot of uh, centre-backs all of a sudden at Arsenal. I, I was uh, smiling about about Gabriel because uh, I miss Arsenal fans asking me when is the official when they will announce him <laughs> <laughs> every day. I was receiving like 100 million messages every day, millions of messages. Why? Why? Why would they not announce him? It's not. I know. Why do Arsenal take so long to announce things? I mean, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I know. I can understand the fans because I'm a football fan too, so I understand you. <laughs> but um, Socrates to Napoli, we're being told. Good chances. Good chances. It depends by Koulibaly. You know, if they sell Koulibaly to Manchester City and they are already in tolls, it's a complicated deal, so slow because the two clubs are not speaking directly. They have an agent who is doing as intermediary, so it's not so quick deal. But if Napoli would sell Koulibaly to Manchester City, I think they will go with, with Socrates for Socrates because the manager of, of, of Napoli, who is Gennaro Gattuso, he loves Socrates. He has been his teammate when he was playing with Milan last year as Milan with Milan player. So that's why he knows Socrates. Socrates and also Roma asked for him, but they will go for Smalling. So in this moment, there is just Napoli for, for Socrates. And they are ready if if Koulibaly will go to Manchester City, they immediately will make a bid to Arsenal to sign Socrates. So they already have an agreement of personal terms with the player mm -hmm. about the contract. It will not be a problem. The real problem is to understand if Napoli will sell Koulibaly or not. This one come today. Out of the blue, this one, right? Now, <laughs> Felipe Anderson, another player who was playing over in Italy at Lazio. I really like him. Really, really good player. Came over to West Ham. First season was excellent. Last season, is, like he real, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, to say he had a dip was an understatement. Um, now he's I, I saw him before linked with a link a move back to Lazio, but now he's being linked with a move to Arsenal. Now, is there anything in this about Lazio? Is not true because Lazio are not playing with wingers, they play with three defense, so they are not going for Felipe Anderson. About Arsenal, he has been offered, that's what I'm told, that his agents are looking at some clubs that can find players like Felipe Anderson, that can look at players with his skills. So Arsenal has been offered this opportunity. At the moment, there is nothing advanced, so we have to wait a bit to understand what Arsenal board will decide about the situation. They already signed William, so, you know, I don't say a similar player, but... Um, it's a kind of player, he's a winger, he's, he's Brazilian like William, so I think it's, it will not be easy. But in this moment, they have been offered this opportunity, and I agree with you when you speak about the player, because you remember the first season with West Ham, but I remember three years here in Italy, he was one of the best players of the league, so fast, mm. with so skills, and so many skills, so I think he's a good, good player, and I think he's also good for football that Arteta plays with Arsenal, so I would say him so good with Arsenal, but it's not just a matter of money. It's also a matter of number of players that Arsenal want to sign in this position. So in this moment, there is nothing advanced. We have to wait a bit. You know, what I want to ask you, right? Um, what keeps propping up in a lot of deals at the moment is a loan fee. So, for instance, with this Felipe Anderson um, talk, they're talking about the possibility of a £5 million loan fee, which is almost like you're signing a player for one year. I mean, this is something that's more, more and more regular in the transfer market, isn't it? It's this loan fee. You didn't really used to have that before. Yes, and this is because of the money. This is because of the balance of the clubs. They have problems this summer, so you in Premier League are going to discover this kind of, of ways of, of payment who are so new for you because you pay the player normally, and that's the normal in transfer market. For example, here in Italy, we have since two or three years 
also the top clubs, when we speak about Inter, AC Milan, Juventus too, they sign players on loan with buy option. It's always like this with the loan fee, an important loan fee, like 5 million euro, 6 million euro. For example, AC Milan are going to sign Sandro Tonali, who is a fantastic young player here in Italy, for mm. 10 million euro as loan fee. And they have a buy, buy option for 20 million euro. So, you know, football market, football transfer market is changing because of the money. After the virus, the clubs don't have immediately to spend 30 million euro, 40 million euro. So you can do one or two moves of this kind of level. For example, Arsenal did with, with Gabriel and they are going to do something again for sure. But you can sign like five or six player play, paying immediately to sign them. So you need to find some different ways and to pay a loan fee, an important loan fee. It is best that you're going to buy the player the, the year after. So that's the mentality. If you give an important loan fee, it's, why? it's because you want to sign the player the year coming. So I'm convinced if Arsenal will sign this player, Felipe Anderson, or another player with this way, it will be to sign the player one year after. Okay. And another one of the nuances of the transfer market is the release clause. <laughs> now... Every Arsenal fan at the moment knows about the release clause because the player that every Arsenal fan would like to see come in this season is Thomas Partey from Atletico Madrid. And he has this whopping £45 million release clause. Could you see that deal happening this summer? I have to be honest. I was thinking yes when we were in June because I was saying Arsenal so convinced to side the player in contact with his agents, trying to create problems also between Atletico Madrid and Thomas to extend the contract because Atletico Madrid were really convinced to, to sign a new contract for Thomas and Arsenal made a problem in, in these talks between Atletico and Thomas. Now we are three months later and Atletico Madrid are still the same position. I speak every day with Atletico Madrid board and they always say the player will leave the club just if they pay 50 million euro, that's all. Or the player will stay here. So in this moment, I think that it will be so difficult in this summer and we come back speaking about after the virus, after the COVID, you know, the clubs are considering every move before signing any player. You have to consider you have to sell players. So Arsenal have many complicated situations also with Guendouzi, players to, to sell. We will speak about Bayerim, possible. But if you sell players, you can try again to, 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 to a potential move for Thomas. If you don't, I see it so, so difficult because Atletico you, Madrid... You, mm. you, don't think they'll move, you don't think they'll move at all on that £45 million or 50, mil, 50 million euro release clause. You think if we don't meet that, no chance? No, 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 no. Because Atletico Madrid have always this kind of position. They Many clubs ask it, for example, for Jimenez, for a black, for many players, important players from Atletico Madrid. They have a philosophy. They sell players just if you pay the release clause, if we speak about top players, obviously. And, and for sure, Thomas is a top player, in my opinion. I would spend 50 million euros to sign Thomas because, in my opinion, he's a fantastic player. For in, in another transfer market, if we didn't have the COVID, if we didn't have the virus, it would have cost like 60 or 70 million euros because we are picking on a top midfielder. So I say, I hope Arsenal will go for him because they need this kind of player. But in this moment, I see so difficult to start negotiation because Atletico Madrid just want to release close. They don't want to negotiate anything. As also, Arsenal offer players. They offered Guendouzi to Atletico Madrid. Atletico always said, no, you have to pay or the player will stay here. And they are restarting talks after the transfer market to extend his contract. So Atletico Madrid are preparing also if Thomas will stay. They are convinced he will stay. So let's see what Arsenal will do. Okay. What about Hossim Awa of uh, Lyon? Brilliant player, did brilliantly in the um, Champions League, considered a real top prospect in Europe. Um, I've read a lot of stuff that you've said on him that also are interested. Uh, you still think that interest is there? Yes, they are absolutely interested. They are monitoring the situation. This, this is the position from Arsenal. There is nothing advanced also because the president of Lyonne is... It's really complicated to, to start talk. <laughs> uh, you have to pay, and it's, it's terrible. So, and we are speaking about the top player. I agree with you. So, for sure, I'm told that Arsenal are interested. They have been in contact also with these agents. So, the situation is absolutely to be monitored. We have to keep an eye always on our war because Arsenal are on monitoring the situation. What I told you about Thomas is like the same for a war. You need to wait some days, some weeks to understand if Arsenal will sell some player, if they can find a new way to find a new budget to go for the player because in my opinion it's impossible to see a war to any club. It's not about Arsenal, but to any club for less than 60 million euros. That's what I'm told that 
Olympique Lyonnais will sell the player just if you pay and real money because and I think they are right because we are speaking about the top player. So if Arsenal will sign him, I would say, wow, top, top signing, one of the best of the transfer window. But at the moment, it's not advanced. Okay. We touched on it. Hector Bellerin. Um, been at Arsenal since he was a, a youngster, come through, you know, even though he came over from Spain, but he, he came through the academy, has been a um, Arsenal player now for a long time, even though he's still only 25, but lots of rumours flying around, linking him with a move to PSG. PSG, of course, in looking for a right back. They had Munier, didn't they? He moved on to uh, Dortmund. Yes. So what's the possibilities of Bellerin? Moving to PSG. There are possibilities, yes, it's true. And we can find also in the Guardian that, that there is something true because uh, Paris Saint Germain director Leonardo is in talks with the agent of Bayerin, he's in talks also with Arsenal. So he's starting to understand the situation. There is not an official bid yet for Arsenal, but they think it will come on next days, on coming days, because Paris Saint Germain will need a right back. Bellerin is so appreciated by Thomas Tuchel, by Leonardo himself. They see him as a perfect player, they think he needs another step many years as Arsenal player, so he wants also to change, I think. That's what Paris Saint-Germain think is not from the player, it's from Paris Saint-Germain. They are convinced they can go for him because he would be also motivated to, to try a new chapter after many years as Arsenal player. So we have to see if they pay, because we always say that Arsenal has to pay play, have to pay players if they want Thomas, if they want Awar, but it's the same for the clubs who want to sign players from Arsenal, obviously. Arsenal want mm -hmm. money or the players will not leave. So I expect an official bid from Paris Saint-Germain on following days for Bellerin because he's the first target. They also can contacted Timothy Castagne from Atalanta to send him, but they they decided to not make any bid also because it was accorded with, with Leicester, his general Leicester. So in this moment, the top target as right back for Paris Saint-Germain is Hector Bellerin. So I expect them to make a move for him on next days. Wow, wow. You know what I have to ask you, right? <laughs> Danny Ceballos, another one again, we're still waiting. You know, Danny Ceballos. Is that happening? Is he going to sign? Are we, you know, we, we were told uh, again. I saw that on um on your Twitter page that he mm -hmm. it's all done. But again, they haven't announced that one yet. But can, can you ask me again? Sorry, I didn't listen so well. Um, Danny Sabayas. Ah, Danny Sabayas is coming. Danny Sabayas is coming. Don't worry, he's coming. He's coming from Real Madrid. The agreement has been reached. He will run or loan, so Arsenal will pay his wages for all the year. But really, I think Arsenal fans should be really happy for the what Ceballos did also for Arsenal because he had many proposals, one from Italy, one from Spain, also an English club contacted his agent, not Real Madrid, but his agent. Dani Ceballos always say they want to stay to Arsenal. I am convinced it's the perfect place for myself. He was been he has been in contact with, with Arteta and we were speaking about Arteta, how important is Arteta to sign players like Gabriel, but not just for this, also to keep players like Ceballos and really Ceballos has a fantastic relationship with Arteta, so I expect them to announce the, the sign of Ceballos on following days also because Real Madrid also told two Italian clubs who contacted Real Madrid to sign Ceballos the player is promoted to Arsenal he will go to Arsenal so just a matter of time and he's coming back so on that one it's a here we go he's a here we go yes here <laughs> we go yeah. don't worry for Ceballos any uh, is there any other sort of players out there that you think that you know Arsenal Arsenal might be looking at at the moment that I haven't mentioned there no, no, I think you mentioned everyone correct. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. I think yes. Mm, I'm, I'm happy for the announcement, as I told you, of Gabriel, because it was a crazy story, really. I think Arsenal did a good, good signing. It was so complicated, really, because uh, Gabriel has different agents. One was working for Italian clubs, Napoli. The other one was working, was working with Manchester United. The other one with Arsenal. So it's so complicated, but they had a good signing. And I think, no, you mentioned all the... All the top targets for Arsenal, so we have to expect what will happen also with Guendouzi because they are offering yeah. him to many clubs. They offered him to Italian clubs, also to Atletico Madrid, also to Paris Saint Germain, and every club said no. I like this player. Why, but Why they will say no? Why? Because he's a young um, player, he's twenty-one. He's he's a French international, but is it? Do you think it's because they're worried that he's a bit of a a bit of a troublemaker? A bit. A bit this, but I think also it's about um, about the money, obviously, because Arsenal make an important valuation of the player. It's not it's not just the, the kind of player; it's also about the money. Because if you want to do a swap deal, for example, it's the same that is happening between Inter and Tottenham for Ndombele and Skriniar. They have problems because Inter say for me Skriniar is sixty million euro. Tottenham say for me is thirty. So it's a big problem if you want to do a swap deal. And the same is happening 
is at least with Arsenal for, for when to see. So they make an important valuation of the player, around 40 million euro. And to go to Paris Saint-Germain, to Atletico Madrid, to Juventus, offering the player and pretending it's what deal, but you can find any agreement, I think is normal. In this summer, no one won't pay 40 million euro for when to see. But I like the player, as you do. Mm. Uh, listen, I really want to thank you, Fabrizio, um, for coming on today. I know you've been really busy with this messy story. Okay. Yeah. Since this morning, you know, uh, it's been crazy um, that. But I think that even that one shows how difficult the whole transfer industry is. It's, it's never straightforward, is it? Yeah, absolutely. My transfer market is becoming like a jungle. I always say, expect the unexpected. So I also say to Arsenal fans, expect the unexpected because it can happen. Everything can happen in transfer market. In particular, in this kind of summer where you have to try to do like loan deals, to do swap deals. Uh, I, I think something particular can happen also for Arsenal because the directors are working in so quiet directors and in what direction I like so much the way that Edu Gaspar is working. I know him since when he was in Corinthians and he has always been a top, top manager, top director. So I'm happy for Arsenal. They have Edu, they have obviously Arteta as manager. I think they are in the right direction and in transfer market they will do so good, not just this, this summer, but they have a project. And I like it when I see the club who has a project. So, yes, and about the transfer market, I always say expect the unexpected because it's a jungle. With Messi, with any player, anything can happen. If you say two months ago, Messi will ask to leave Barcelona, I would say crazy. Now we have this kind of situation. So <laughs> everything can happen. Anything can happen. You know, what club do you support? I support, I have to, to tell you the truth, I support Watford. But it's a crazy story. Yes, yes, yes. it's a crazy story because I was looking. Yes, it's crazy because I was looking at the match, uh, the famous match. What for Lacey? We tried in scoring in the last minute. And yeah, I felt something special. So I started to play also with FIFA with video games when I was so young. Always with what for? They have Italian ownership. I know the owners yeah. because they are the same owners of Udinese in Italy. So I have some links with Watford and I always appreciated the club. I like also to support small clubs, not so important, top clubs. And, and I, I like it. So I, yes, I am a Watford fan. <laughs> oh, well, you'd be a bit disappointed that they're selling Decore then because he's... I know, he's I, know. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I was surprised at how cheap he's going for Decore, 25 million, because I think he's a very good player. I, would yes. have, I wouldn't have even minded him at Arsenal. He's a good player, he is. Yes, 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 yes. I absolutely agree with you. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much for coming on today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, keep doing what you're doing. We love we love um, you. You know, going onto your page on Twitter and we love hearing from you. You know what I mean? And as you said, <laughs> what we like about you, we like your honesty. You don't Thank try you. to be, you know, there's a lot of fake people out there who try to come with these fake rumors. But obviously from what you say, you do your research you give it to people as you hear it and it's honest opinions and that's what we love about you. So keep thank doing you. what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can just say thank you, really. I'm so happy about your work, so proud because you're an important channel about Arsenal, about football in general. And to hear this is really my pleasure. It's like I, I say when I listen to words like yours, I say I win. I can, I'm winning because that's what <laughs> I want. The people are happy. Football fans are happy about the transfer market. Football market, transfer market is like... A dream. You have to dream. And I'm happy when people are happy to feel that I'm doing everything for, for you. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Robbie here from AFTV. We just got to say a big thank you to everybody who follows us across our various channels. Over a million followers on YouTube. Don't forget, you can now also catch us on Reddit. We're on Reddit, so get involved with us on Reddit and also on TikTok. Keep it AFTV, baby, right here.